Hey everybody, Steve here. Uh, we continued on with Mark chapter 8 verses 1 to 21. And this is a passage where uh, we've read about it before in Matthew, but here it is again in Mark. And just a little bit of a different point of view, same event. And it says that there was a great multitude that followed Jesus for three days and they had been listening to him and uh, seeing the miracles that he had done. And you can imagine um, he had compassion on them because they were hungry. Not only were they spiritually hungry, but they were physically hungry. And so to further demonstrate his power and authority, he took the loaves and he took the fish and he gave thanks and they gave it to the people and they were all fed. And uh, there was multitudes. I mean, there was, it says that those who had eaten were about 4,000 and he sent them away. Again, here's another miracle of Jesus, of uh, you know, going against the laws of physics and, and because he's been given all power and authority. But then we get to the point, we have to think back to what we've written, uh, written about or read about so far, and that Jesus, he cast out demons, he healed the sick, the infirm, the crippled, the lame, those with leprosy, blind, blood issues. Uh, I mean, just over and over again, we see time and time again the miracles that Jesus did, and he taught as one with authority, not like the scribes and the Pharisees and the hypocrites. You know, basically they were false teachers. Their hearts were hard, were far from God. They were hard, hearted, and that's basically what they ended up being was false teachers. Um, you can say all the stuff that you want, but if your heart is, if inside your heart comes thoughts of wickedness and adultery and lies and deceit, and all those things, that's the fruit of your heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you conduct those actions. Everything starts with your heart. And so really there were false teachers and Jesus was confronting them and that's what the message was, was to repent or perish. You know, you've strayed from the narrow way of salvation and you've gone on that broad road and you're making other converts even worse than you are. Uh, you're doing things to be seen of men and not seen of God. You know, your giving is, is done in public and they're in the synagogue and you make a big show of it. It's not about uh, what scripture tells us to do as believers, which not don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. You know, and your giving should be done in secret. Um, unfortunately, we see a lot of people that take great pains at displaying their giving, uh, either in church, in a building, in a denomination, or even sometimes as, as a ministry, in a false ministry. But we continue on with the Pharisees, and they seek a sign, and seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. And he said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Surely I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. Now, this is what we see when, I don't know if you people have gone out witnessing, but if you go out and witness, you know, you'll have people who say, Well, if there really is a God, strike me, you know, have him strike me down dead, you know. Uh, they'll make these outrageous claims. And even those are the people that don't believe that they'll ask for a miraculous sign as some sort of proof. Um, but God doesn't work that way. The greatest sign that, that was to be given was that Jesus died on the cross and then he would be risen again by God because his sacrifice on the cross was acceptable to God. Now, since it's talking about the Pharisees, you know, unbelievers is one thing because they don't believe, but how many believers, people who claim to, to be Christians, how many of them want a sign? How many of them are, are buying tapes and DVDs and going to conferences to get the next big anointing? Kind of like the Todd Bentley thing, you know, you got to get that fresh fire, you got to get the fire of God. Um, you know, you've got to get the special anointing. There, TBN and there's so, you know, so many of these false teachers are about you have to get this whatever it is to show that you know you're you're favored of God or you're a believer or whatever when actually Jesus says that you know we're supposed to, to judge the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart that out of out of our heart the fruit I guess that's that's more uh, what I'm getting at is the fruit of your life your words your action your deeds those will show that you're following Jesus Christ and it's interesting because Christianity today, American Christianity, will get to the point of where it'll, instead of relying on that relationship that you have with God to change your heart, 
so that uh, you know you're cleansed of all unrighteousness, your sins is forgiven, you've made it, you've been made a new creature in Christ, and you're striving on, running that race to win, uh, disciplining yourself and being a steward for God, and your nature is to, is to do God's will. It's no longer to do the the will of the world or the flesh, but uh, you'll see American Christianity, those who claim to be Christians, will replace that holy living, that righteous life before God, and they'll replace it with a program or a church attendance or how you dress in church or any number of things to kind of be an outward demonstration to prove that you're a Christian, but there's really not much to see when you look at their heart and their words, their thoughts, and their deeds. Uh, and that's something we've got to worry about. Jesus, when they get back onto the boat and the disciples only had one loaf of bread with them, he ends up saying, uh, you know, uh, take heed, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. The leaven of the Pharisees is false teaching because remember Jesus had talked about, you know, uh, the defilement, what, what defiles a man. It's not how the special washing secret code of how you wash your hands, um, you know, or or the example of the son saying, hey, you know, I'm not going to support my father and mother because all my money goes to God. You know, it's going against the commandment of God. And there's a lot of Christians, so-called Christians, hypocrites, the fake Christians that are doing that. And that they will cater to themselves and their own idea of what religion is rather than following God and his word. And then they have those, the leaven of Herod. And what they'll do is they'll take part and they'll, they'll interject that sin into their lives. And our lives are supposed to be a sacrifice to God. And so, and that's the problem because all of us have done that. All of us have, have dipped into the world and dipped into the flesh and followed that instead of following God and His Word. And that's why it's called a race. That's why we need to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Jesus says, uh, why do you reason because you have no bread? You do not yet perceive nor understand. Is your heart still hard-hearted? Having eyes, do you, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? I mean, that's got to be harsh. Here we think, like I said in the last video, we think that the disciples, that when uh, they traveled with Jesus and lived with him, that boom, uh, they were... They got it. They were good. But this is time and time again we're seeing Jesus saying, you guys don't get it yet. You don't understand. Your heart is still hard. They're trying to rely on this instead of the relationship with God, of letting God and his word come into their lives and change them. That renewing of the mind uh, with God and his word. And and you can't, your mind and your, your body can't be renewed by memorizing scripture. It can't be renewed by going to church. It can't be renewed by praying 10 times a day. You have to confront your sin first. You know, it's uh, the Bible also talks about the, that you can't even approach sinners. Can't even God can't even hear the prayers of sinners. Wow. No wonder the Bible says that we need to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith to take up our cross, to die daily, to, you know, follow after Jesus Christ and what he did. And then if we understand that just a little bit, that, that we're supposed to be holy as he is holy and live that righteous life, then when we pray, it's not for our will, but his will to be done here on earth. And then that prayer of a righteous man will availeth much. But we have to walk in sound doctrine. We have to walk in his righteousness that is afforded to us by uh, grace. And we're saved by grace alone. So that's something to think about is that, you know, we need to confront these things. We need to take care of that sin. And we need to take it to the cross. And we need to ask God for his forgiveness. Because if we don't, if you don't ask for forgiveness of your sin and you're still continuing in sin and you're going to church and you're praying and you're doing all these good things, uh, that's going to be a problem because sin separates us from God. And we don't want Jesus to say, hey, uh, depart from me, I never knew you. Because that separation of that sin. So that's something to think about. So anyway, that's Mark chapter 8, verses 1 to, what was that, 21? Verses 1 to 21. So anyway, take care, God bless, peace.